you fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today's video, a day in the life, breeding for profit, Michael's Fish Room style. Grab yourself a snack and a beverage. Check out my website, michaelsfishroom.com, where you can buy five milk guppies, get one free. Buy five, get six. michaelsfishroom.com. Stand by. Six fifteen in the morning. Day in the life of breeding for profit. Here we go, folks. This is pretty much how my day goes. <clears throat> so here's the fish room. Uh, the lights in the fish room come on on a Wi-Fi timer. They come on at six a.m. because by the time I get down here, between six fifteen and six thirty, all the fish are awake and moving. Um, you know, those two lights and these lights, they're on two different timers. Fish room right, fish room left. I know, very original. Anyway, uh, then we gotta come and, you know, we got this little pull cord here to an old school light. And that turns the rest of the lights on. The most important light over the workbench because I'm blind. Now, <clears throat> let's just take a look. We got the heater, which I have on now, because there's no heat in the house yet, and it's a little chilly outside. Let's take a look. This is a working fish room, folks. First thing I usually look for, are there any leaks on the floor? And you can see the floor is wet. That is residual from two nights ago. Not last night, the night before. We had a leak two days in a row because I couldn't find it the first time. I thought I did, and I didn't. And... Uh, Actually, I found another leak. I did just find a leak, and here's how I did it. I have this hang on, uh, this uh, dip and pour, which is hanging on the tank, which didn't have water in it, just had duckweed, which I was cleaning some tanks out of duckweed. I was gonna sell it at the uh, this fish swap. Oh, guys, by the way, if you're in the area, the tri-state area, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, <clears throat> even New York, the Lehigh Valley Aquarium Society, is having a fish swap, and I'm a vendor there. Uh, I'll put, right now, I'll put the flyer up so you can see it. And you guys, if you're in the area, stop by, say hello, buy lots of fish, support the club. I love the club, it's run by Karen and Alan. You know I love them. And uh, yeah, that's a, a local fish swap. If you ever wanna know, how come I don't have any local fish swaps near me? You do if you're in this area. All right, folks. So I, I see the water in here, and the first thing I did was look up and watch this. Ta-da! I don't know why this was out, but it should be here. Now, I do have plans this winter to redo all the water lines and actually all the air lines, make it much neater, uh, much more streamlined. I also am currently debating, now get this, folks. I've said I wanted to take this 20 long down for months, and I haven't because I've always had fish in there. And then I'm like, well, what if I take all these 10s down and replace them with 20 longs? The problem is there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 10s, and I can only fit a total of 6 20 longs if I put them this way. Now. I might go rogue and put them the long way. Ooh. Not really sure though. Not really sure. May have to buy a couple and, and check it out and see. <coughs> I'm fine. It's not the Rona. All right. Day in the life of the fish room. Back to that. So we come. We found the leak. We fixed it. Now we decide what are we going to feed the fish for today? For their morning feeding. So we go and we look at the food, right? And we go, all right, these guys are still... Uh, are still in quarantine, so they have to get fembendazole flake. But everybody else, what are they gonna get? Are we gonna go with the extreme community crave, which is this stuff, which I really like. And you can see I did date it when I opened it, 825. And of course I bought it at supercichlids.com. Love super cichlids, use code ship for free. For free shipping over, I think it's over $39, and you get a free gift at $59. And I love them to pieces, and they still, and we're besties, and I don't, I, I don't want a free gift. I, you know, it's, 
they're using it for you guys to spend some money. I don't need it. Like, I get it. But they always send me a free gift. And I always get this. This is the free gift. This is the size of the free gift you get. Look at it. But I always get extra kelp wafers because I have a poop ton of plecos that like to eat. Anyway. God, I'm so ADD. Like, whew. Um, all right, so what are we gonna feed? We got the Extreme Nano. I think I fed that yesterday, so we're not gonna feed that today. I think we're gonna go with a flake today. <sighs> Do we go with the guppy pellet? Let's go with the Cobalt Ultra guppy pellet, and then we're gonna need something. No, no, I'm just kidding. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna go with flake today. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with the PRA Shrimp Flakes. Now, I don't think I can do this one-handed. But, I'm gonna try. All right. So first of all, I don't know, can you see them? No, you can't see it, but, but look how pink they are. Let's, let's, I'm just gonna feed this tank. Look how pink it is, it's like shrimp. And they love it. This is from my boy, Ryan Anderson at PRA Aquatics. And uh, it says 50% protein, which is what I like. Ryan is a great guy. He's a discus breeder, so he knows his stuff as far as food go, as far as how food goes. But look at them. They love it. These are the Red Dragons. These are on the website, michaelsfishroom.com. I am planning to ship all the way up until the week before Thanksgiving. And then uh, after Christmas, I'm going to see how the weather is and try, uh, maybe try a little bit of shipping with uh, some extra protection, if you will. And overnight shipping, we'll see how it, how we how we do it. Because usually I stop shipping. Anyway, day in the life. I'm gonna feed the fish room, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, fishy folks. So all 60 tanks are fed. At least guppies are fed. I still have to feed the plecos, which we'll talk about in a little while. Um, but what I normally do, which I couldn't do while I was feeding, and show you at the same time, because I was out of hands is I check the fish as I'm feeding. I'm looking at them, seeing, you know, are they hungry? Are they eating? Are there any dead? Uh, you know, are my, are my filters working? Are air lines jacked up? Are water lines jacked up? I do all that in all 60 tanks when I feed. Um, sometimes I do it before I feed, uh, if I have lots of time in the fish room, or, uh, you know, I just want to relax or whatever, but that's that's what I do. But. Let's take a look here at this specific hospital tank. This is a tank I always spend more time than others looking at. And uh, this is the tank of sick fish. They had calminaris, uh, or they were swimming all jacked up, or they looked like they were gonna die. I put them in here and I treat this tank. You can see that there's a male guppy back there that's not swimming great. That's why he's in here. Not really sure what's wrong, but I'd rather him be in the hospital tank than in a main tank somewhere. So. Uh, also, you can see how the fish are just chilling in the back. They're not eating. You can see there's food up here. I think you can see, but there's food up here. And I, I wanted to demonstrate something to you for this video. <clears throat> when you have a hospital tank, it should have everything a regular tank has. Meaning you would never put a guppy tank with nothing in it if you were breeding guppies, right? You would always have some place for them to hide. Floating plants potted plants someplace a site break somehow so there is there isn't any of that in this tank so they're skittish now i'll put the floating plants back i took them out yesterday um and then i wanted to show you what what it would look like so there's a lesson all right let's go through the tanks real quick here are the albino koi's i got um and what i would look for is i would look and see are there any any jacked up fins, any tails that are jacked up that I need to put these in the mutt tank. My filter's working properly. Uh, I'm checking my airlines, which there are two up here. I don't know why there are two in this tank, but there are. Uh, making sure my drain's not clogged in the back. You know, that's the kind of thing. If I were to look at this angelfish tank, I would do the same thing. There's two filters in here. Uh, we got floating plants, um, we have the potted, uh, anacry not anacrys, the potted water sprout I got from Keith at KJE. Everybody looks good, everybody's swimming. Same thing here. Now this tank, hold on, let me stand up. This tank has plecos in it, so we look for a couple other things in this tank, right? 
Plecos, these are the uh, Super Red Mutts. They're just Super Red Calicos, but I like Super Red Mutts better. Um, so, you know, Plecos are just chilling on the bottom. We got the bigger Leopard Guppies. And there's fry in here, so we're just checking. The fries look like they're getting to juvenile size. You know, check and make sure the filter's working. And uh, see, I found a problem. See those bubbles? That means this, this filter is, has an air stone in it, right? That means the air stone's not in the filter. Plus, if you look down here, uh, you don't see any bubbles, right? So if I follow the airline, there's the air stone, right? So it's gotta go in the filter, which I'm gonna try to find with my left hand while filming. There we go. Now, I imagine because this, it originally started as, oh, quick, I need an extra filter for this tank. So I put it in there and then look, look, the airline's just, it's long, see how it is. And then it goes back there. So I'm guessing I knocked it out somehow, so. Like, that's, that's some maintenance that I really got to get done in the fish room. And that's something I'll put on my mental list. And since I'm a mental midget, I'll forget about it. All right. Let's take a look at some more, some more of the stuff that you have to do in a fish room with a fish tank. You know, we look and see, are the bubbles in this filter? They're coming out pretty good. So that means that even though it looks like it's pretty dirty up top, enough air is going through everything. Filter's not clogged. Now take a look at this one. Now I know this filter was jacked up from the beginning, but this is a pretty small filter for this tank. These Santa Claus guppies here. Uh, I have to change that filter out. So I'll probably do that this weekend. I tend to do big maintenance on weekends. All right, more checks. Day in the life of a fish room breeding for profit guy. So this is a breeding tank for um, plecos and I overfeed the crap out of it. And one of the ways you can tell is all the snail eggs. There's, I don't know, a billion snail eggs on the glass. Hopefully they all don't hatch. It sucks that I don't have chew anymore, rip chewy, because I didn't care if I made snails, it didn't matter to me. Now, take a look at the awesome Japanese box filter. You can see that it's working, but it looks like there's some air trapped. So I'm gonna have to do some filter maintenance on this one. What we're looking for specifically in this tank though, because it's a breeding tank, is are there any babies yet? And there are no babies yet that I can see. I don't see any boys fanning eggs in any of these caves. And I can't really see the, the, the big cave in the back. So that's what we look for. We spilled some Cyclops yesterday here. So we got to clean that, which I won't do. All right, folks, that kind of does it for my morning session in the fish room. Go ahead, grab a snack and a beverage if you need to. And when I come back, we'll show you the afternoon. All right, fishy folks, it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and because I work from home three days a week currently because of COVID and the pandemic, I come down here at least once in the afternoon to uh, feed the fish an extra time. So I'm just going to turn my lights on with my app. Love the app. Everything looks pretty much the same as how we left it. We'll turn the main lights on. Oh, look, the fish is dead. No, he's just sleeping. He was sleeping. I woke him up from a nap. So, uh, yeah, I'll just come and I'll feed the fish. And if you're home and you have fish that you're breeding for profit, uh, it's a good idea to feed them a lot. They'll eat it and they will grow. And when they grow, they'll grow faster and bigger and you will be able to sell them for more money. This feeding, this time when I come down a couple times a week, uh, when I'm not, you know, in the office, I really just feed the fish. I don't do much else uh, because technically I'm working. So don't tell my boss. So these are the chocolate albino bristle nose that uh, I had uh, in a big tank. They, uh, I don't want them. Uh, they're all females, I believe, so I can't breed them. So I'm going to bring them to the swap meet and uh, see if anyone wants them there. One other thing that's real nice when you turn the light on for the first time, a lot of the baby plecos, which you can see one here and one here, uh, they're, they're out and about. So these plecos actually came from my friend Joel. Uh, he, he had one of those really nice caves. You can see there's a male in there doing his thing let me focus on that. see his tail wagon 
he's happy to see me. Uh, he didn't want any more Pleco Baby, so he wanted to know what to do. So he brought me the whole cave. I have to give the cave back to him next time I see him. Uh, but I'm sure there's more eggs in there because this this batch of, of Plecos makes a lot of babies. So you can see all the cute ones right there. They're adorable. Anyway, so that's just a, a thing when you first turn on the lights. If you have Pleco Babies, they'll be all over the glass like these guys. So, All right, folks, I'm going to feed now. And uh, what I've decided to feed is this. New Life Spectrum Grow. Um, I got. I, I didn't actually buy this. I would never buy something so small because 60 tanks, this would go really fast. But uh, I had a, a customer and a friend who moved and she had to get rid of all her stuff. So she gave me all her food and all her medicines and stuff. And I've been, been trying to use it and get rid of it. So here are some Fire and Ice Platinum Guppies. Just one of the, the fancier guppies I have in my in my uh tank that one doesn't quite look like a fire and ice guppy so i gotta get that one out of there i'm gonna do that now luckily it's a small female so i'm gonna go do that now and i'm gonna feed so we'll be back for the nighttime feeding all right fishy folks day in the life breeding for profit michael's fish room it's about 6 30 i just finished dinner i do the cooking so they're cleaning the table and getting the dishes done um this is the second to last time the fish will be fed until uh, Monday morning after I'm done packing orders. I pack orders either uh, Sunday night or Monday morning, depending on how many I have and what I have going on on Monday. Look at the plecos just chilling. Um, and so when I come down and feed them um, for the night, I usually spend some time down here also looking around, uh, looking in tanks. You know, seeing if I see anything interesting or things that need to be uh, adjusted. There's a lot of fry in this tank, so I have to make sure in these these fire and ice platinums, I feed them heavy so they don't eat the fry. Um, this tank, I'm in the middle of redoing. Uh, so there's some plecos left that will be for sale, some bigger plecos that will be for sale. Um, and there's an assassin snail that I have to take out of there before I bleach the tank. Um, not sure when we're gonna put in here yet, but you know it had flamingo grow outs. They're all now down in here in the flamingo tank, and I have some more flamingo guppies that were grow outs. Plus, what was growing outside? Some of them are in here. So, uh, you know, gotta gotta look around, see what's going on. These plecos did not eat the way overfeeding that I fed them. Uh, this morning, yeah, I, I overfed them. I dropped way too many wafers in there, and uh, they haven't eaten them. So they should be gone this, tonight, tomorrow morning. I'll check. If not, I will scoop them all out. I'll also try to scoop out some of those snails. Like, that's some of the things I do on a daily basis, scoop out snail. You know, there's a lot of mom here, mom here and a lot of uneaten food, so I might gravel vac that. These are the Dumbo Red Mosaic fireworks I got from uh, my buddy Phil. There's been a couple of drops. Just waiting for them to grow out so I have enough to sell and put on the website. Um, what else? Got some slow growers. These blue tucks, they had babies in March. These are these were probably born in February, and uh, I thought they'd be ready to go, but they're just not. I don't know why they're growing so slow, but they are. Um, some of the other things I do, uh, I'll probably clean off my workbench because I got to get it ready for uh, packing orders. So here's one box I had extra. I made an extra one last week. What I do uh, definitely on Sunday is I print all my labels and then I make all my boxes. So when I come down, I can just start, come down in the morning on Monday morning, I can just start uh, bagging fish. I don't have to worry about it. Um, some of the other things I might do is I might sweep the floor. I try to sweep the floor once a week. It doesn't always happen, not gonna lie. Uh, what else? You know, we look here. This is some fish that I got in from a breeder. So I want to make sure they're doing well. So far, so good. Lots of fry. She sent me. They're doing well. Um, <clears throat> you can see I've started switching over to the aquarium co-op filters. I really, really like them. I may come down and do a couple of those. We have seeded sponge filters that should be ready to go. Should be back up on the website in a week or so. If you want one, uh, certainly email me, and uh, like if you need one in a hurry, email me, we'll see what I can do. Look at some of these mutts. That mutt, that's from my buddy Joel. It's got like that, that tail and that color, I can't even, it's so gorgeous I can't even talk about it. Angelfish, 
I want to get rid of the angelfish, so if you're interested, let me know. I may even bring some of these to the, uh, the swap meet to get rid of them, but... Anyway, folks, that does it for the day in the life of breeding for profit. And uh, I'm going to start doing some more breeding for profit videos. I've been asked a couple times to do them, so... I have a uh, PowerPoint I'm working on. I'll be doing some local fish clubs, doing some presentations there on breeding for profit. So that does it, folks. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to check out the website, michaelsfishroom.com. Buy five mutts, get one free. Take it easy, guys. You know what would be nice if this actually focused? More checks, day in the life of a fish nerd. No. <clears throat> All right, 6.15 in the morning, day in the life. Here's what the fish room looks like, folks. First thing in the morning. Now, you can see not all the lights are on in there. There's a reason for this. This is stupid. That's not the reason.